Hello guys. Ah. Hello guys. So this is uh don't know how many days of circuit. Like uh, feels like 100 day already. Feels like 100 day already. Feels like 100 day already. But at least I know today is Monday. Also the start of my children's home based learning. Um, really thank the school for taking out a lot of effort to. Uh, prepare all the materials for us within such a short span of time. Even for my son who is only six months old in infant care, he also have home based learning. Okay, so not like Gong Gong stay at home. I wonder what you guys actually doing at home now. Uh, for me, every day is about like maybe cooking a little bit. Uh, then now I have to think of if my children have the ingredients that they need for their home based learning. So it's time to time, I will actually go for grocery shopping. Then, of course, there's nowhere else specifically that we can go. So now, uh, I try to take morning walks with them where the crowd is the least because I would think that now a lot of people sleep in. So I'll bring them out, uh, take a walk, get them to have some sunshine, make them tired, <laughs> sweaty and tired. Then after that, they can sleep well for a nap. Very evil, right? So during this season while you're busy with like your children and stuff like that remember to slot in a little bit of like self-care health care so i think if you're like me you have young children uh one of the ways that you can have sanity is really to have a little bit of a schedule for yourself like after, either after they sleep or like uh, in between during the day so i will like today i just did yoga when they were taking a nap like a short 30 45 minutes or if not i will actually do yoga like after they sleep so this is one of the ways for me to add value to myself if not you might just feel that after another couple of days more i think any parent would just go crazy because they are just doing everything pertaining to their children and etc so remember to hook up a personal schedule for yourself like your small little me time um although the me time will not be like so much now like they could just be jolly well half an hour 15 minutes one hour etc or couple time has diminished from no time to totally negative time spent maybe couple time also like now see me my bowl but uh, try to spend a little, of, little, bit, little bit of time, a little bit of time, uh, together, uh, with your spouse. You know, watch like a series, like half an hour, forty five minutes. Listen to some calming music. Um, it will actually help uh, any parent get through a day better. So I try not to think about when is my end game, because every time I think about. 4th of May, I think it's a uh, 很遥远的事情, but I just think about how to do well for each day and um, I think about what I can do for myself to make myself feel excited so sometimes can be eating sometimes can be yoga in sometimes can be uh, sleeping maybe so something like that so give yourself uh, some me time scheduling uh, can be going to the toilet and hide for half an hour also not bad and i will see you guys tomorrow again hi guys so today is a gate breaker i can't remember which day uh but it's tuesday and the kids are rather happy that makes me happy I am actually seeing some benefits of it now because just within like one week I'm starting to see um, some changes in Levi uh, I see that he's using his knees more he is starting to build strength on his arms so it means that he would likely be crawling soon uh, I'm really excited because I sent him into infant care the very moment he hit a two month milestone and every single day I will have to go ask like his teachers how is he, what's he doing and everything and as especially after the COVID started we, we were not allowed into the school anymore I'm, I'm spending more time with him now I'm very happy that I can celebrate his milestones now with him it's really good because now 
like as I said, Levi and Samuel, they are each other's classmates now. I can see that they acknowledge each other more and Samuel actually do show love towards Levi. When the children scream lesser, when things are more organized at home, uh, that will actually make me a uh, more happier mom. As opposed to my first couple of days, I so, I don't know, God bless me. Uh, I feel much better today already. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen for the next few weeks. But obviously, fingers crossed, uh, I still hope that they can go back to school soon. There were like 300 over cases yesterday. Um, it's actually really quite horrible. Let's just really hope that the numbers will drop. If not, I don't think so we will feel safe sending the children back to school. It is actually absolutely normal to feel that uh, you want your children to go back to school because uh, it is obviously tiring but I think most importantly uh, is the fact that we don't really get to do our own things because uh, the children will always be so needy. Uh, I am going to answer five questions that some people have been asking some concerns during this season, especially the circuit breaker. So, uh, question number one. The answer is yes, you actually can choose to do confinement without a confinement lady. You just have to make sure that you and your husband really make a good team, okay? You have to prioritize what will be the important things and urgent things to do during that season. Before you go into the confinement phase, a couple of weeks prior to that, it's important to think through what are the things that you may or may not need while doing the confinement. So if you are going to do confinement only with you and your husband or with you and your husband and like another grandparent, then uh, you should think about catering food, for example, uh, and the children's clothes, uh, where are they going to sleep, the taking care of them schedule, uh, the feet. Are you going to do like breastfeed, formula feed? Uh, what's happening during night feed? Who is going to feed? Etc. Etc. What are your restrictions? What are things that you are able to do during the first week? Then when you are recovering, what will you be able to do more on the second week? Etc. So the only thing about doing confinement by yourself with only your spouse, that means without like a professional confinement lady, or some, sometimes even without a helper is the fact that you have to be willing to, to do some things yourself that means you, if you, you cannot be looking forward like you want to rest the entire 30 days that will actually be really impossible because that would actually put a lot of strain for your, your husband or grandparent so you will have to participate in a little bit of some things it have to be a certain level of give and take during this season, okay? You can always go read out on my site. Uh, I have some resources on specifically for confinement, com doing with confinement lady, doing without confinement lady, doing with a helper. Uh, what are the things that you should prepare, look up for. You can all find the resources on my site. So, good luck. Uh, question number two. I think the standard way is always to eat a lot of fruits. Variety of fruits will actually help the children feel like a little bit more interesting. If you're gonna offer like pear, 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 pear all the time or like apple, 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 apple every day, then obviously your children will not be so interested in it. So what I do is I actually take a colorful plate and then I chop like a variety of fruits. So maybe I have a uh, raspberry, blueberry, strawberries, then I have apples. And, and then I'll put them all on this beautiful plate and then everybody will huddle together to have the fruit moment so we will all be eating so fruits obviously will help to build immunity some common ways that parents have been using are like probiotics, elderberries those vitamin gummies that children like etc another way I help my child build immunity is to brew the traditional uh, apple onion garlic uh, drink for him so I let him drink the essence I do it especially currently during this season while we are all at home at least once a week or like twice a week for him to drink it's not too difficult to do you can check out uh, my resources on my net or DM me if you actually need the recipe question number three I think it is important for you to allow your toddler or child to understand that screaming is a naughty behavior. 
So in our home, if Samuel screams, at uh, the first time when I hear him scream, I will tell him that he's not supposed to scream. If he persists in screaming for whatever reason, unless it is because he is screaming out of like happiness, then obviously he will not be punished for that. Uh, but I will still have to ask him to stop screaming, right? Basically, as I mentioned before, Samuel screams often. Whenever he screams too much, even if he screams out of like happiness, at some point for, for boys especially, initially they scream out of happiness. After that, they start screaming for the sound of screaming. This will be the moment where I will tell him to stop screaming, and then I will tell him that if he continues to scream, he will have to go to the naughty corner. So I actually have two naughty spots at home. I use a duct tape, put a cross on it, to indicate that if he portrays a naughty behavior, he will be placed on the spot. Before you apply the naughty spot technique, you have to tell them and give them a warning first. You can't suddenly turn to the child and then bring them to the spot. So if your child screams, you can tell your child that they need to stop screaming. If they scream again, they will need to be placed at naughty spot. If they continue to scream, you bring them to the naughty spot and tell them, go down to their level, look at them eye to eye because we're a very big size. So squat down, go down to the level. Tell him that you are here because you have been screaming. I told you not to scream. So you have to be here for how many minutes, okay? If your child is three years old, then your child will have to be at the naughty spot for three minutes. So the number of minutes that the child is there will be determined by how old is this kid, okay? So five minutes for obviously five-year-old child, okay? So, so you have to tell the child that you have to be here and think about what you have done because this is a naughty behavior. So they are not supposed to move around, sit around, fool around. They are not supposed to do anything except to just stand or sit at that area and wait for the timeout to be finished. And then, for example, Samuel has finished his three minute rule. I will go back to him, go down to his level once again, and then I will tell him why he is there. So I will remind him, I will reiterate, okay? Because you scream, that's why you are being placed here. You are not supposed to scream because it is naughty behavior, okay? And then I'll ask him to apologize to me and then hugs and kisses. So this is the process of it. This is one of the ways that I always apply whenever Samuel misbehaves and whenever he chooses to disregard my warning, I will get him onto the naughty spot and I will follow through to it. And hence, it's an effective method if you apply the method properly your child would actually have enough respect to stop whenever he's asked to stop because they know that if they continue to persist in a naughty behavior, there will be consequences. That's just as simple as that. The question number four. If the circuit breaker ends but COVID is not gone, I will not bring them anywhere, to be honest. I'll probably still just bring them to the beach. Uh, thus far, I feel that it is the safest place of all. But if the virus is over, the first place, which I never really thought about it. I think I will bring him to maybe a indoor playground because I think that was like the first thing that we immediately stopped going when the virus actually started. So probably the first place that I'll bring the children is to go to like a huge indoor playground that uh, they can both enjoy. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, question number five. Now the ruling is like, if anybody is without like a mask, they cannot go into a supermarket, they cannot purchase whatever, right? So now this is the, the rule, I think that this is just being like courteous, you know, because everybody has certain level of fear and obviously like people who sell food or they, they, they operate the supermarket, they still want to operate, right? And obviously we, we as consumers, we still want them to operate. So if you are going around without a mask or buying things without a mask, that will make people feel uncomfortable. Uh, but with regards to bringing like your child that who is like barely one or just one year old, I think you really shouldn't like bring uh, your kid even to the supermarket. Uh, if you can, you should really try to get someone to take care of your child. Or like for us, we, we, we just get the children to stay in the car with one of the adult. So this this is this is like totally like person's preference, right? If I go to the market myself and I leave him with two children, he feels that it's difficult. When he leaves me with, alone with the two children, he will think that could be difficult to handle and what if two of them cry? So what he usually suggests is we bring the two kids into the car. Samuel will be in his car seat. He will be like latched onto the car seat. He can't go anywhere. He just sit down there, either eat something, distract him, sing songs. 
and then Levi will be in his car seat or if he's impatient because he's still like a six month old baby we, we can one of the parents in the car can actually still carry him so the other parent will just hop into the supermarket come out into the supermarket within about 15 minutes or so sanitize our hands before we go into the car and, and that's it so try not to bring your children really really young children to anywhere at all actually like because there's really nowhere to go yeah you can go for a short walk but really not to the supermarket and yes they, they do have to wear masks uh, because there are people who actually got uh, rejected because they brought their children into the supermarket and because their children like essentially too young like one year old to two year old they don't have proper face masks on them so they were also being asked to leave so safer trip keep the children at home so this is what i have for you particularly long but I also hope that answering all these questions will actually help all of you guys and perhaps we'll do it again if it's really beneficial so I will see you guys and I hope that you guys are really still alive and kicking all parents out there um, once again try to control the amount of game time electronic devices time for your children think about something creative that they can engage in uh, get them to do some baking etc bake some cookies bake a pizza etc or you can definitely get resources from the cracker side to, to, to see what, what are the things that you actually can do with your children so I will see you guys then and I'm just so going to sleep now